Well, hello, Internet. Well, I'm going to continue with part three of the complete CSS tutorial now, where I cover every property and every change you can make with cascading style sheets. Now on to the background property. Like with the font property, there is also a background property that allows you to change multiple things in regards to the background of your web page all on one line. As you can see here, I'm defining the background color as red. I am defining what the background image is. I'm defining that I do not want that image to repeat and I want it to start off in the top left hand corner. So let's go forward to explain all the other different properties in regards to the background. You can define the background image with this property right here, followed by URL and the location of the image. You can define how a background will repeat, meaning a background image with the background-repeat property. Here are some possible values. First, repeat what this does. If this is chosen like I did here, this background image is going to repeat itself both horizontally and vertically. The no repeat option will not repeat the image at all. It'll just show it one time. Repeat X will repeat the background image horizontally and the repeat Y will repeat the image vertically. The background position property is going to tell the browser when, where you want your background image to be located. In this case, left, right, center, bottom, top, either a percentage or a length. Then you have background attachment. Normally a background image will scroll with the rest of your page, but if this property is set to fix, then the image will stay in the same position as the user scrolls. The following example would force the image to remain fixed while scrolling. So if you want that option, meaning that this image over here, this is my background. If I had it set for fixed as I was scrolling, this would not move. As you can see, it's moving. If it was set to fixed, it would not move. So that's the background attachment property. It's one of the most confusing properties and it's almost never used. Here, you, by selecting the list-style property, you can change what you want your bullets to look like. And here are all the options that would be available for you in regards to styling bullets within lists. Then you have your list style image property. Here, what you're able to do is define a image that you want to use for your bullets in your list items. Now, I'm going to go on to all the table properties. Border Collapse property tells the browser which border model should be used in a table. If you choose the Border Collapse and the property Collapse underneath of it, what this does is it collapses the borders around table cells so that there's only one line between table cells versus if you had separate, which is the default, where every cell has its own border. The Border Spacing property is next. Border spacing property can have one value to specify spacing on all sides or two values to specify the horizontal being the first value and vertical the second value. Then we have caption side properties. If you do not know what a caption is in the table, that probably means you haven't seen my HTML tutorial. If you click up here, you'll be able to see that. With this, you decide on what side of the table you want your caption to show up. There is just one final property left, and that is the cursor property. If you use the cursor property and then follow it up with, for example, help or crosshair or default, you could see how my cursor is changing whenever somebody puts their mouse over top of anything. And this is every property that's available to you in regards to changing your cursor. Now you understand all there is to know in regards to changing properties and property values and everything there is in regards to cascading style sheets except for layout and positioning properties. In the next presentation, I'm going to go completely through the box properties and explain layout and positioning. Till next time!